Hello, welcome to the channel. So I did a video yesterday, which was my first TikTok reacts video. I did casino accounting reacts to uh, gambling TikToks. And today I'm just going to take a general step back since I have been a corporate accountant for the past 10 years. Well, the only 10 years of my professional career. So today we're just going to look at accounting videos rather than gambling videos. And yeah, let's get right into it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Got a good response yesterday. Hopefully this one gets a good response too. And let's see what we got. Professional accountant here. And if you are in the last two years of your accounting program, you're gonna to wanna to watch this video. Accounting is so much easier in practice than it is in college. Every week I think. I would generally agree with that. I think, I think that's true for a lot of professions though. I think, you know, the whole point of high school and college when you're looking at a specific career, it's more so to teach you the theory behind things like why are you debiting this cash account? Why are you crediting this cash account? You know, why are liabilities the opposite? You credit, it's a natural credit, blah, blah, blah. So I think when you're learning the theory of why you're supposed to do stuff, it, it can get a little confusing and it can get a little off-putting because you don't quite fully grasp the point of it if you don't do the stuff in practice like you would when you are actually an accountant. So I genuinely agree with that. Let's, uh, let's go on to see if I agree with those other points. I think to myself, there's no way these professors had ever worked in this profession because they would have taught it so much differently. Same so that's actually funny. So when I took uh, Intermediate Accountant 2 in college, uh, my professor, who was a CPA, I am not a CPA. However, I, I, you know, like I just said, I've been in corporate accounting for 10 years now. But she told me she, she told the class she was a cost accountant for JCPenney. And it's just like, you know, honestly, I'm at a higher level than that. And this woman is a professor. So I'm like, it really can't be that hard. But uh, let's go on. Even the cash flows almost never needs to be prepared unless you work for a huge publicly traded company. Don't worry. If whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Because they would have taught it so much differently. Statement of cash flows almost never needs to be prepared unless you work for a huge publicly traded company. Don't worry if you... Uh, <laughs> so that's inherently wrong. It all depends on what position you are, honestly. So for the first five years of my career, he said you never do cash flow unless you work for a big mofo public company now uh, the first five years i worked for a publicly traded company and i had nothing to do with statement of cash flows uh and currently in the past five years of my career i work for a private company so not publicly traded on st any stock exchange and i am the only person responsible for the statement of cash flows i populate the statement of cash flows every single month so I highly disagree with that one, obviously. Let me get a drink of water quick. All right, let's move on. If you don't understand it or if you're confused by it, some of the strongest accountants I've ever worked with have taken days to prepare a statement of cash flows and they still couldn't make it tie. Pensions probably shouldn't even... So as someone who... <laughs> as someone who took over these statement of cash flows for the first time in my life when I started with my current company five years ago... Uh, yeah, it took me a long time to fully understand the ins and outs of the cash flow, why I'm putting stuff in certain positions. Even now, five years later, there's still areas on the cash flow where I'm like, I don't fully grasp it. I know where I'm supposed to be putting things, but I still don't fully grasp it. So if you're in college and you're learning at the cash flow, just like I was learning about the cash flow in college, like it, it seemed foreign to me at the time. I understood the theory behind it, but in practice, it didn't make much sense to me. It's one of those things if you, like he said in the beginning of the video, if you do it in practice, it, it's a lot more understandable, but the cash flow can be very confusing if, if you're working on it for the first time. But even, even a lot of technical accountants still get confused with the cash flow. So don't, don't worry if that's you be taught anymore i think that that should be included in the governmental accounting curriculum because unless you are working for a government client you're probably not going to be doing much pension accounting deferred tax uh 100 agree pension is going away it's a thing of the past you're very few companies even have pensions anymore so i agree with that taxes none of us understand deferred taxes none of us don't let us trick you we don't get it either every account that says they understand deferred Deferred taxes is lying to you. So I have a general understanding of deferred taxes, but let me tell you, corporate taxes 
in college was arguably my worst subject I've ever took in my life. In fact, it was because I have never in my life up through college have gotten lower than a B plus in any of my classes. And lo and behold, corporate tax comes along and I get a C. And honestly, I was pretty happy with that C. Corporate, a, corporate tax is a very difficult course and your brain has to be wired for it. It really does. As, as someone who's a corporate accountant who doesn't deal with tax, I, I deal more mostly with external reporting, reporting to auditors. You know, I prepare cash flows, balance sheets, income statements, ca uh, comprehensive income, shareholders, equities, roll forwards. I, I'm more along external reporting guidelines, but <coughs> I completely agree with him in saying that uh, taxes, you don't really have to be knowledgeable at all unless you are going to specialize in tax accounting. Deferred taxes, I honestly do understand it a little bit, but it's not perfect. Uh, no one's understanding is perfect. He's right. Uh, I highly agree with him here. The biggest takeaway in governmental accounting should be the intra-fund assets and liabilities, like receivable and payable for intra-fund. Those are used all of the time in the private sector. Remember, most corporations have more than one legal entity. And in my experience, a lot of... Uh, very true. They... A lot of corporations tend to have a ton of legal entities. It just depends uh, what company you're working for. Sometimes they all need separate financials. Intercompany assets and liabilities are a huge deal, and a lot of companies struggle with them, especially. Yes. I, all 10 years I've been a corporate account, I have been working with intercompany accounting the huge ones. IFO is still a thing, and I have no understanding why. I don't have much experience in inventory accounting, so I'll let someone... Same. It's like this guy's living my life. I swear to God, I did not watch this video beforehand, but holy crap, he's aligned with me on a lot of stuff. Who does take the helm on that one, but as far as I'm concerned, the financial statements should reflect an accurate representation of what a company has done. No company is managing their inventory with LIFO method, ever. They would have so much expired product. It's yeah, I've, I've only have experience with FIFO, first in, first out. Just so unrealistic. The professors only care about you passing the exams. And the curriculum is designed for the CPA exam. And almost none of that stuff matters when you get in practice. Don't beat yourself. I completely agree. And, you know, like I said earlier on in the video, I do not have a CPA. Yet here I am in the accounting field for 10 years now, working for corporate, which is like, Pretty much like uh, these are the positions where you would want a CPA normally if you were hiring. But I completely agree with almost everything he said, just not the cash flow part. But you really, uh, once you get into practice, you realize that it's not as difficult as it was in college. At least it's it's a whole different world. And it sounds like I don't, I don't, I'm wondering what his actual career was because it sounds very similar to mine and the things he's talking about, like inventory accounting, like. And I have been in corporate accounting for 10 years. I've never done anything with cost accounting, inventory accounting, fixed assets accounting. I've worked a little bit with fixed assets. I have a general understanding of it. But generally, if you go to a bigger company where you're going to be a corporate accountant like me, you're going to have specialized facets. And, you know, maybe I'm not a fixed asset accountant right now, but if they wanted me to specialize in it and that's all I focus on, you know, it is transferable. You just got to learn uh, a couple more, uh, a couple different accounting methods. But don't forget, when you're in the accounting field, especially if you're more towards my area of like external accounting and reporting to auditors, you're going to be doing a lot of research and research is important. So even if you have a CPA, you're still not going to know everything on, you know, proper accounting for everything. And even so, the auditors, no matter what you think of them, they're not there to try and get you. Uh, you can generally go to the auditors if you have questions on how the accounting should be handled. They don't want to redo your books. They don't want to go through extra work if, if it's going to be wrong. So generally, you can go to the auditor and say, how do you think this should be handled if it's a weird situation? You know, maybe you're selling off an asset and it falls under different uh, IFRS or GAAP uh, guidelines that you've never used before. Generally, the auditors will come back to you and say, this is the way that according to our national office, it should be handled. And then you just record it. 
and you're off and it's a lot easier than uh, researching it yourself, getting it wrong and then going through the headache of restating it. All right, let's move on to the next one. And hopefully I put a cough drop in my mouth. Hopefully my throat uh, can stop drying out here. But let's get into the next one. A lot of students, if you have an interest in accounting, you know, they're going to teach you this. And then basically you're doing like the, the T accounts, like debit left side, credit right side, the T account, cash here, the accounts receivable on the other side. And that's how you record entries. Uh, you know, on this TikTok, it showed, you know, a calculator and you're writing all these entries down on paper and writing it. And even that image right there of like the table. Like, that's what you learn in college, and it looks nothing like that in reality. Uh, in reality, booking journal entries is all going to be done through a computer, and there are so many accounting systems out there, so I'm not going to get into like what the what the software actually looks like because every company uses something different. Uh, in, in the 10 years that I've been an accountant, even though I've only been with two companies, I've seen over six accounting systems. All look completely different, all different interfaces, but... Uh, generally speaking, you're just going to be typing entries, typing amounts into the computer, and it can generate like a trial balance like this, but it's not going to look like that. It's not going to look like, uh, you know, left column with like debits and credits necessarily. It's going to be a lot more clean looking and a lot less uh, line by line. I guess you want to look at it that way. But uh, yeah, it, it's all computers and accounting. There's no such thing as like writing entries down on paper anymore. Right, let's get into another one. Reasons to stay in public accounting. Obviously no reasons. Uh, as someone who's been... Uh, by the way, when they say public accounting, they're talking about you know, one of the big four auditing firms like uh, PwC, Deloitte, uh, Ernst & Young, and who am I missing? KPMG, did I say them or not? But... Basically, public accounting is when you are an auditor. So you go to all these companies and you audit their work. You make sure everything looks legal, looks according to GAAP or IFRS standards, depending on what, if you're an international company or US-based company. Um, public accounting is brutal. And I have been fortunate enough to be in private accounting for all 10 years of my professional career. Uh, I've seen auditors workloads. Uh, it is brutal. It is brutal. And honestly, I don't think the paychecks in public accounting are worth it. However, public accounting, if you can bite the bullet, even if you don't want to do it long term, if you're coming out of college and you get your CPA, uh, public accounting is pretty much going to be a shoe in for like you're guaranteed to get a job there pretty much. But if you're able to suck it up and do all the traveling in the long hours, you're pretty much hireable at any accounting position in anywhere in the country. And if you do public accounting and you have your CPA, you, you can fast track yourself to a controller, meaning like they do, they're, they're in charge of all the accounting for the company. Uh, you could fast track your way to a controller easily, but public accounting sucks and I do not envy anyone in that position. All right, let's hop into another one. Accounting 101. All right, let's see it. This is Accounting 101 under 60 seconds. There are three financial statements that you need to know. The first one is a balance sheet. It provides a snapshot. Balance sheet is probably uh, everyone's favorite when they're in accounting class. If you have an interest in account accounting, uh, balance sheet's the easiest one. It's the one everyone understands. It's just, uh, yeah, let's get into that company's finances and can be expressed as assets equal liabilities less equity. Assets are what the company has, such as cash, inventory, and equipment. Liabilities are what the company owes, such as loans and accounts payable. The difference between assets and liabilities is equity. This belongs to shareholders. Income statement is a so Oftentimes when people ask me, uh, like, what does it take to be successful in the accounting field or, you know, before they pursue any interest, like taking accounting classes, they say, like, you know, what makes you 
good at accounting. And I say, if you've ever taken like a foreign language, so I'm American and like, I was really good at learning Spanish. I picked it up quick. But if you're really good at learning another language, I think accounting is very similar. Everyone always thinks that accounting is so like numbers, 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 and there's nothing else involved. In reality, accounting is really like learning a new language. It's just a different way to speak about a business. So a lot of times, if you have no idea like what accounting is and you have to take it as a course in high school or college, you know, you're looking at these words like retained earnings, equity, liabilities, accounts receivable, accounts payable. It's kind of like another language. And, you know, some of these are common sense, like cash is an asset. It's like that is common sense. And if you start thinking more along those lines of how it relates to everyday life, like a liability could be, you know, like a, a like what you owe on your mortgage or a car payment or something like that. If you can translate it and, you know, make consider it like its own language, uh, to me, it makes a lot more sense and it's easy to learn. So if you're good at learning new languages, honestly, I think you're going to be good at learning accounting. Numbers are not a huge part of accounting as much as people think it is if they don't know it. It's the second type of financial statements that you need to know. In the income statement, you will have revenue and expenses. The difference is net income or net loss, which feeds into the retained earnings, which is part of the equity. That's how this two state. See, that's like a lot of people will get that. They don't understand how that could possibly correlate or it's like your net income or your net loss uh, ultimately feeds into your retained earnings um, or your retained deficit if your company has been doing bad for multiple decades now. But <laughs> revenue minus expenses is net income. Yes, that is the most generalized way to say what an income statement is. Uh, people who are accountants like myself realize that, you know, that expense line can get really, really detailed. And, you know, it depends what company you work for, but there can be so many different expense lines. Uh, it can blow your mind. Are related. And the last one is a cash flow statement. This statement shows company's activity that affects company's cash, but you can't see them in the income statements, such as paying dividends or obtaining a loan. Cash flow is where, uh, as I said in the beginning of the video, that a lot of people get confused. Uh, it is definitely the hardest of the three statements. Yes, it, sh it ends with what your current cash balance is on the balance sheet. But uh, and it starts with whatever your net income or your net loss is. So basically, what you're doing is you're getting from your net income to your cash. And to get there, so what I do every month preparing the statement of cash flows is you have to back out items that are considered non cash transactions so you can get to cash. So stuff like certain amounts, certain uh, depreciation and amortization of objects. I don't want to get too technical here. Um, uh, certain types of foreign uh, FX noise can be taken out of there. But cash flow statement, basically you start at your profit or your loss and you end at cash. And in the middle, you're finding out all the different ways, you know, paying back loans, receiving new loans, paying out dividends, you figure out all the ways to get it to your final number in your cash. So when you're analyzing a publicly traded company, cash flow is above and beyond the most helpful. Balance sheet is just, you know, what you see at that specific date. So, you know, if you're looking at the 10K, which is the year end. So for most companies, that's going to be December 31st of that year. The balance sheet is literally just what the balance sheet is at December 31st. It's a snapshot in time. So the balance sheet could theoretically completely change January 1st. Income statement's not going to change. Cash flow does a great job of marrying the income statement and the balance sheet. And it's a great way to see, you know, is the cash flow from operations of a company really strong over the past couple years. Cash flow from operations is what I believe is the most important thing to look at if you're going to analyze a publicly traded company for yourself. Let's do one more. All right, here we go. Last one. My biggest life regrets is not becoming an accountant. No, not an accountant. An accountant. 
I have a BA in Econ, but I wish I'd majored in accounting because there are so many benefits to a career in accounting. As a first gen Latina, I didn't know anybody who worked in the industry, so I couldn't ask for guidance or understand what a day in the life was. So obviously I'm not Latina, but I will say, you know, when I was in college, I didn't know anyone in my family or my group of friends who was an accountant. And I had no clue what to expect going into a job. And it was kind of scary for me. And in my first initial interviews, um, a lot of times I, I came very honest with the person interviewing me at a college. And I was just like, I just kind of want to understand, like, what does an accountant do day to day? And it's scary because it's like uh, I, the guy said in the very first TikTok that I looked that yeah, I analyzed that like college doesn't prepare you for the day to day of what accounting is, what you're going to be working on the day to day. You understand the theory behind what you're doing, but you don't know what you're actually going to be doing. And, you know, depending on the position, it could be wildly different. But yeah, uh, common misconceptions you don't know anyone in the industry and it kind of spooks you i get it i was like these are three common myths about the accounting field i used to think accounting was for non-creative bean counters but let's flip that accounting gives you a stable and in-demand career that gives you the flexibility to pursue your creativity in your five to nine if you ever do go full-time as a creative like i did those skills do come in handy trust me a lot of people um I, I get what she's saying is that like you can kind of as an accountant shut off your brain after the job is over and be creative. Uh, I generally, I mean, one of the reasons I got into accounting is because I'm not a charismatic person. I didn't really want to, you know, talk to people that much. And I thought accounting would be great for that because I could just sit in my cubicle head down and do my work. And to some extent, that is true. I mean, obviously, in any business situation, you're going to have teammates, bosses, managers, whatever, and you're going to have to communicate at some point. But generally, I do think a lot of accounts are very dull and boring. And honestly, in the 10 years that I've been doing it, uh, you find out that a lot of accountants think the same way you do. Uh, they're not exactly exciting, and uh, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just a type personality. I would a personality type. I would say that it's just good to be an accountant. I also think you have to be a math whiz to be an accountant, but in reality, most accounts just need basic arithmetic skills. Technology does the rest of the math. And last, yes, completely. I mean. There are some instances where it's like if you're really good at arithmetic, like you're really good at mental math in your head, like it can speed up the process a little bit. But she's absolutely right. The accounting software is kind of pretty much do everything for you. And as someone who works in consolidation software, uh, yeah, uh, the system's going to do a hell of a lot of math for you. Accounting has unlimited opportunities. You can work for a Fortune 500 company, a nonprofit, or start your own business. A lot of these roles are remote or give you the opportunity to travel. If you're looking for a high... Yeah, that's true. So the first five years uh, when I was at a public company doing casino accounting, I was able to travel the country to teach our casinos that worked under our corporate umbrella. I was able to teach them our accounting software and help them develop on it. And I was able to go to over 12 casinos in like eight different states. So I was able to travel a lot. And then now I'm fortunate enough where I survived the COVID layoffs and I'm permanently work from home. I've been permanently work from home since uh, May of 2020. Uh, I love it. And accounting is one of those jobs where you can absolutely do it remote unless there's a lot of, uh, unless you're more on the AP AR side where you have to deal with a lot of in invoices. But even then, uh, you can still do a lot of the work remote if you have your own printer and scanner. So yeah, there is a lot of opportunities to become uh, more than just a cubicle worker if you have an accounting degree. And it's funny because I actually asked one of my professors in college, you know, what would you suggest, you know, that I do with an accounting degree if I didn't want to go into it? And he told me that teaching is the best way to go if you don't want to go into the business world. And I thought that was interesting because it's like not, there's probably not a lot of teachers who want to teach accounting. And, 
you know, it might not be the highest paying unless you get to a, a university like him. But uh, yeah, there's a lot more opportunities with accounting than you think. So I generally enjoyed all of these videos. Uh, I have positive reactions to all of them. Nothing negative to really to say. If you have any questions about the accounting field and you want to uh, ask it down below, by all means. If you like the video, leave a like. This was more of a positive, lighthearted one than the gambling one yesterday where I just ripped to shred all these stupid systems. Uh, yeah, maybe I'll keep doing these reaction videos. They're really fun. They're really easy for me to do. I enjoy doing them. Uh, obviously, I'll, I'll stick to my field. You know, I did casino accounting, corporate accounting, external accounting. You know, I prepare cash flows, balance sheet, uh, income statement, comprehensive income, all the jazz. Uh, so I'll stick to my guns. I'll, I'll do what I do best uh, in terms of knowledge-wise. But I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you did, and I'll see everyone in the next one.